In a ceremony medieval and modern, two American veterans returned to England for the first time in 60 years, confronting their past and exercising demons. Smoke screens and explosions make the practice as much like the real thing as possible. But just one week before D-Day, in Exercise Tiger, a dress rehearsal for landings on Utah Beach, German gunboats torpedoed three lumbering American ships and 749 American servicemen died. A very uh, uh, dangerous place to be. They were, they were sitting ducks. Yeah. It is a, a terrible thing when you think about it. Charlie Brubaker was a 20-year-old machinist mate then. Radioman Steve Sadlin, also 20 then, survived by jumping into the icy waters of Lime Bay. You ever wanted to see somebody just cornered, screaming, and, and you know, running around with burning? It's it, it just a horrible sight. Sadlin could only watch and listen to his shipmates dying. And they'd be screaming, they said, help, help, and then after a while, they'd, you wouldn't hear no more help. Survivors say the operation here was so secret, some were threatened with court-martial if they ever discussed it. And the losses were so disastrous and embarrassing, Exercise Tiger was hushed up for 40 years the U.S. military wouldn't admit what happened. Though many men were buried with honors in England, Exercise Tiger was not publicized, much less hailed, leaving scars six decades later. Deep, deep bitter. What bothers me is, is, is all those people that died they got no recognition. I, I, can't, I can't get over it. Good to see you. you. Nor you're can Charlie Brubaker. He's the clown Charlie comforting hospital, hospital patients uh, because he survived when so many didn't. I've been blessed and I want to give back. Only this weekend when the two 80-year-olds joined commemoration ceremonies did exercise Tiger's wounds start to heal. And when they laid a wreath for the fallen, and rest in peace, and God bless you all. And onlookers cheered, any lingering bitterness vanished. The word just can't explain how, uh, how happy uh, I am of, of all this. And today, another wreath laying for the fallen. More tears, more pride. For Exercise Tiger, 60 years, and for some, still only moments ago. Bob Faw, NBC News, Slapton Sands, England. That's nightly news for this Wednesday. I'm Tom Brokaw. I'll see you back here tomorrow night. They came in their hundreds to a peaceful beach in Devon this afternoon to honor some of the heroes of the Second World War. Sixty years ago today, as American servicemen took part in an exercise which helped ensure the success of the D-Day landings, German gunboats launched a surprise attack. Almost 750 soldiers died. Today, they were remembered. Here's Emma Murphy. Aged and frail, they came to remember their fallen colleagues who were little more than boys when they were killed in the waters off Devon. 60 years ago this week, 749 American servicemen were lost during Exercise Tiger, an eight-day practice for the D-Day landings. The beach in Slapton had been chosen because of its similarity to the Normandy invasion sites. However, German e-boats got wind of the operation and torpedoed the Tiger vessels. Today's wreath laying, organized by the Royal Tank Regiment, took place next to one of the US Sherman tanks lost during the attack. It was recovered from the channel in 1984 and has stood as a permanent reminder ever since. I don't think it should be forgotten. Uh, there are not many of us left who served in the war, but um, those who are left, I think, should pass it on. Among those attending the service, some of the American survivors of the attack who still struggle with their memories of it. In my heart, though, it, I feel so bad about all the uh, servicemen that lost their lives and, 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 and a lot of the loved ones. Every year, the number of servicemen able to attend the memorial declines, but all those involved remain determined to ensure that no one forgets the sacrifice 
made on Slapton Sands. Emma Murphy, ITV News. And that's the news. On Good afternoon. Today marks the 60th anniversary of one of the Southwest's worst wartime tragedies. 749 American soldiers and sailors were killed during Exercise Tiger in April 1944 as troops rehearsed for the D-Day landings off the South Devon coast. Our defence reporter Scott Bingham has this special report. The run-up to the D-Day landings began with a mass invasion of the UK. Between April 1942 and the beginning of June 1944, around one and a half million US troops arrived in Britain. Tens of thousands were stationed in the southwest, and towards the end of 1943, 3,000 civilians were evacuated from villages and farms around Slapton Sands as 15,000 US troops moved in for live fire training exercises. They were given six weeks from the middle of November until the 19th of December and they all had to be out. Um, they emphasised that they knew not how long we would be out and uh, they said if there was anything left behind they wouldn't be responsible for. There's certainly a milestone in one's life because you find that people that had been evacuated sort of things were either before evacuation or after evacuation. Slapton was selected for the training exercises because of its similarity to the beaches of Normandy. Exercise Tiger was to cost more lives than were lost in the actual assault on Utah Beach on D-Day. On the 27th of April 1944, two convoys of landing craft left Plymouth and Brixham to rendezvous in Lyme Bay. In the early hours of the next morning as they manoeuvred to approach the landing beach at Slapton, they were intercepted by a marauding flotilla of nine German e-boats. Torpedoes and gunfire sunk two of the eight landing craft and one was badly damaged. First thing I remember is a big ball of water got rolling through it. And the next thing I remember, I was out in the water. And when the ship came to pick us up, I had three other guys that I'd picked up, drug up across them, and they had passed out. But they did live. We lost them. They say 749 Americans, but I... I think we'd all around 1100. The true death toll of Exercise Tiger may never be known, but the fact is hundreds of young men made the ultimate sacrifice. With the number of veterans dwindling each year, this memorial close to the beach will always ensure they are not forgotten. Scott Bingham reporting there. For the people involved, it's a key anniversary and many have travelled miles to return to Slapton and pay their respects. Two American veterans who were on separate landing ships when the attacks happened have been speaking about their experience. I did not know what was going on when it happened. I was in, in the engine room of our ship and the ship in back of us was torpedoed and sunk, but I didn't know that until the next day. During the exercise tagger, I it was on uh, condition two, it's an emergency, and I was up on the ball of the ship when it when the torpedoes hit. And to mark this, the 60th anniversary. It's almost like a sort of closure. Since I'm here, the importance and, and being a part of this has brought back a lot of memories. I was not angry. I was angry we've had a point af right after it happened. But I'm not angry and haven't been angry over the years. But this puts to rest some of the things for people that that are hurting. Charles and William were among hundreds of American servicemen who turned out to Sunday's memorial service next to the wartime tank that commemorates the dead. It was emotional. I, mean, I couldn't quite visualize that that many people would turn out for this thing. To be here in person is, is something else. And then to realize what the people of this, this area do for this, it's amazing. I feel very very proud to be a part of it. Charles Brubaker ending that report. And if you'd like to share your memories of living in Devon during World War II, log on to our BBC Devon website at bbc.co.uk forward slash Devon and click onto the message boards there.
Thank you, Mary. Now, it's 60 years since one of the worst blunders of the Second World War. Nearly 800 men were killed in the tragedy just off the Devon coast at Slapton Sands. It happened when a flotilla of landing ships in Lyme Bay preparing to practice beach landings for D-Day were torpedoed by German e-boats. Yesterday, survivors laid wreaths at the Sherman tank at Tor Cross, which stands as a permanent memorial. Jilly Parton reports. They told us it was a dry run. It was eight, eight, eight ships in our flotilla, and we were the last ship in the convoy. And then the nine e-boats attacked us. Former GI Steve Sadlin is one of only a handful of men alive today who lived through the horror of April the 28th, 1944. He flew from his home in the States to be at the 60th anniversary service to pay tribute to his dead friends. Hundreds of ships were in Lime Bay practicing for the Normandy landings when the Germans came from nowhere. It was the dead of night. Two landing ships were struck, killing many men instantly, turning the sea into a sheet of fire. Steve prepared to jump. Before we jumped in, the signalman, he, he, was, he came up from the stern end of the ship. They had the oh, diesel oil in them, and, and he says, I'm not going to go jumping in that water. He says, it's too cold. Oh, it's 42 degrees. So I, I pointed to the fire. He says, look, I says, either you're going to burn to death or you're going to freeze to death. You got two choices. I says, I'm not going to go jumping in that water. But we did. But the guy that signaled me, missing. He is missing to this day. It's the first time in 60 years that Charles Brubaker has revisited the scene. I'm glad I came because it, it brought back a lot of memories of losing a lot of people that were innocent and had no, for no reason, they, uh, some blunders, they died. Those blunders were hushed up for 40 years until a local man, Ken Small, stumbled across the truth. He raised a U.S. tank from the seabed and wrote a book about the tragedy, ensuring that the servicemen who died will never be forgotten. Jilly Parton for West Country News.